Good afternoon, everybody. Dr. Galvin here with a brief uh, COVID update. We're gonna talk a little bit about Delta today. Uh, for those of you new, uh, my name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine doctor. I also run a uh, pre precision medicine uh, anti-aging clinic in Charlotte called Vitality Medical Wellness Institute. I'll put the link up there if you wanna check us out. I've been doing updates uh, for, about COVID ever since it started because I still work in the emergency department. So, you know, what's the deal with Delta, right? It's all in the news. All of a sudden, you know, we went from having no COVID to everywhere. Um, I still work in the emergency department. We hadn't seen emergency uh, cases of COVID and, and they were very rare up until last weekend. And I went in and the first five people I saw all had COVID and you know, all of them were pretty sick. Um, the sick ones were unimmunized, but we saw a couple people that were immunized as well, although they weren't sick. One person came in for something completely unrelated, but had been exposed. We tested them, they were positive, they were asymptomatic. The other person had tons of medical problems and normally I would think would end up in the hospital and probably in the ICU and, you know, was able to be sent home. What is Delta? You know, what's the deal? And why, why are we having, why are the vaccines not preventing it? Well, those are good questions. First of all, remember it's a variant, meaning that the original SARS-CoV-2, which was what all the vaccines and everything were made against, has changed over time. And the more chance that virus gets to replicate, you can get these variants. And so somebody asked me this question and it's a little bit like, you know, we've got a, you know, we've got um, a, a test that measures about, measures whether or not there's a dog there or not. Um, you know, the, the question in terms of COVID is the dog, right? Um, it The variants are like, you know, in one case it's a Pomeranian, in the other, other case it's a, it's a Doberman. They're still both dogs, but they're they're different, right? They're, 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 you wouldn't mistake them. And so what happens is these variants come along and you basically get a new species of dog. It's still a dog, but it's different. And, you know, our immune system responds differently and that's what's going on. Um, what's the deal with Delta? Why is it different? Well, it's much more transmissible meaning that the r naught is about eight or nine, which is up near chickenpox and measles. So the original SARS-CoV-2, the r naught, meaning how many people a typical person was infected would give it to was around two, maybe three. This is eight to nine. And so that means that for everybody that gets this, vac this version, they're going to give it to eight or nine people. And that is because there's a high viral load in the nose and we know it's airborne. And so if you got a thousand times more virus particles in the nasal passages, the chance of it spreading is longer, is, is easier. And also it does appear that it might last a little bit longer in that transmissible phase in the nasal passages. So you're not only more transmissible, but you're transmissible for longer. And we think you may be con more contagious earlier on. And again, remember you don't get symptoms right away. Um, vaccines were developed against the original version. They're still pretty effective against the variants. Now, you have to understand though, these are not sterilizing vaccines. That means that it doesn't prevent you from getting the, va the virus. What it does a very good job of preventing you from getting really, really sick. So we're starting to see plenty of breakthrough cases and the majority of those people are having cold-like symptoms or they're completely asymptomatic. Very few of them are ending up in the hospital or being uh, or dying. The people that do end up in the hospital and dying are typically people that have underlying medical problems or are very are, are elderly so that's good news you may have seen the study about the uh, the outbreak in in Provincetown and in, in Cape Cod where they you know 74 percent of the people were were vaccinated well only about one percent of those people actually had enough problem that they had to go to the they were admitted to the hospital the majority of those symptomatic people were um, pretty mild. And remember, you got a, a population that was highly, highly vaccinated. So those numbers may be skewed a little bit, but we've known that, that vaccinated people can get infected. The deal is you don't get really sick unless it crosses from the mucous membranes into the bloodstream. When it comes to the bloodstream, it deals with endothelial cells. You start getting those COVID pneumonias. You get the oxygen saturation problems. You get the blood clots. You get the, the heart attack strokes. All those bad things that we have with severe COVID, you get when that, vac that virus is able to cross from the mucous membranes into the bloodstream. The vaccine does a very good job of preventing that, and that's why it's so effective at keeping people out of the hospital. Um, it does not prevent you from getting it. Now, with alpha, it wasn't that big a deal because alpha wasn't that contagious. There were lower viral loads in people that were vaccinated, but Delta is different. Delta, if you are asymptomatic or if you're vaccinated, you still get pretty high viral loads in your nose, which means you can still give it to somebody. 
you're unlikely to get really, really sick, but you, you can still be, it can be contagious. And that's why mask guidance has changed. Um, now, if you happen to get, if you happen to be immunized and you get it and you have a cold and you, you get over it, you get a little bit of a bonus. Nobody's talking about this, but not only do you have vaccine immunity, then you have natural immunity too. You get both, which is great news because natural immunity is always better, but you know, the risk of getting COVID is very high. 30% have long-term problems. You know, eight to 10% of people get blood clots with COVID. You know, there's, there's a huge thing of bad things. So if you got a vaccine that prevents you from getting in those bad things and you happen to, you know, unfortunately get exposed, you end up with both natural immunity and uh, vaccine immunity, which is good. Um, I, the, the big concern with these variants is, uh, you know, is one going to demonstrate amino escape, meaning that they're, they're not affected by the vaccines at all. We haven't had that yet. Cross our fingers, it won't happen. Um, what are the recommendations? Well, you know, year, months ago, um, you know, I, I posted a, a, my, what I've been giving my patients, I think since November, a, a supplement list of things that have been, you know, at the time thought were thought to be pretty effective against preventing viruses. And that data is held up. And we're talking about vitamin D, quercetin, zinc, um, uh, melatonin, and a few others. I'm gonna revise that um, guideline. And if you want it, just send a, an email, go to our website, put in a request, um, or email info at vitalitymwi.com and I will send that to you. Um, you know, in terms of other treatments, you know, ivermectin. I've used ivermectin with a lot of my patients. It, it's been a mixed bag. Some of them have gotten better. I, I have one um, person I know right now who's very, very sick with COVID. Young woman, um, healthy, um, has been on ivermectin and everything and is still on home oxygen and not doing well at all. Um, has a relative fully vaccinated who just tested positive. She had the sniffles. You know, so, um, you know, it's still dangerous. There's a race team um, in town that um, we know about that um, has 20 cases. Now, these are all young, athletic, primarily men on the pit crew and things, and two of them ended up with COVID pneumonia. So, yeah, you know, if you're healthier, you're at less risk, but you're not at no risk. It's best not to get it. How else can we avoid, you know, masking, washing hands, distancing, all those things are um, helpful. So we want to try to avoid getting it, wear your mask. If, if you're close proximity to other people, wash your hands, look, you know, be, show a little bit of distancing prevention, the supplement protocols and things like that. Um, treatment, ivermectin, um, some of the monoclonal antibodies, there's a, a range of things that are being studied um, that potentially may work. The eye mask protocol by Dr. Corey um, has been used pretty effectively by a lot of people. And there's growing data that support using that. And a lot of the things in that eye mask protocol are also the things that we've been recommending to our patients supplement wise since the beginning. So yes, Delta's out there. Now, interestingly, if you look at some other countries, Delta looks like it, it has a huge big spike and then tends to burn itself out pretty quickly. It happened in England and in India. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers the same thing will happen here that we'll see a month or so of really you know intense numbers of cases, then it'll drop off. So that's just looking at other, what's happened in other countries. Um, Delta seems to bear, burn, you know, be really, really aggressive and then burn itself out pretty quickly. So we'll hope that's the case. In the meantime, Look out for yourselves, protect yourselves, follow these recommendations. If you want that supplement information, shoot us an email, info at vitalitymwi.com or via our website, and, and I'll put those both up here. Um, stay safe. I am working in the ER um, Sunday night and Monday night. So I'll do a, a, an update post-ER shift probably Monday or Tuesday morning. Stay safe.